I just want to introduce a big inspiration to myself, my daughter, my family, the world. and all the women who are in the audience today. Can, can, you, can you just come up and just let, me, let, just let everybody see Miss Lauren Hill? <laughs> to all the men in the audience, the so-called men, I want you to understand that this woman taught me how to be a man and how to be a husband and how to be a boyfriend. So if you haven't listened to it, go back and get your old school album and listen to Miss Lauren Hill. <laughs> just say hello. Just please. Just say Hi, hello. everybody. Um, <laughs> I, what, what am I doing? I, I came sort of late in the program. I kind of listened to some of the things that, that people have had to say. I think early on, I was in arts and music. I had a brother who was, in, who was in the tech space, ironically. When I was a child, my father was a computer programmer and an entrepreneur. My mother was an English teacher. And uh, we kind of grew up, my brother and I, the fusion of those energies and those directions and those, those focuses. I heard you, Chameleon, talk about your thirst for information. I think that thirst for information is a thirst for empowerment, which is also connected to a thirst for freedom. I remember this, this was like, I want to say, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. I saw my brother, you know, he had very high hopes about the potential of the tech space. But I don't think that at that point we had come together. We weren't walking together. It was sort of, there were people who were like makers of content. And then there were text-based professionals and people who had a desire, right, to be in this space. But I don't think at that point that they understood to what degree they had to hold hands in order to make the relationship successful. I think since I've been away and as time has passed, those two communities are holding hands much better. They have a better respect for each other. You know, um, I used to say something jokingly back in the day about how you had street folks who kind of legitimate legitimize the academics and the academics who legitimize what the people on the streets were doing. Even the concept that you mentioned just now about the inner nerd, I think what's happening is, is that everybody is sort of being allowed to be themselves, meaning that the, the street intellectual is acknowledging that he's an intellectual, you know what I mean? Or he also is an academic of something. And then you have the people who are in the academic space and they realize that they also have a world of experience and desires culturally, creatively, that they want to also aspire to. I think before, in the world, there was this huge schism, right? There was, it's kind of like uh, the history of slavery where you had the, the, the house slave, right, and the, and the slave in the field. You had people who were given permission or who were granted permission to reach a certain academic status. And in order to, to get to that academic level, they had to sort of divorce themselves of every other drive and all, all the other energies. And then you had the people who were left in the fields who had these very raw energies. You know, they were life, life force energies. But they weren't really allowed with the, with the volatility, you know, and the hostility that came from the experience of slavery to touch the academic spaces. There were few people within that community who could touch both worlds. They, they crossed both spaces. They were both academics, and they, were also, um, they also had access to the streets. Musicians, many musicians, people in the music world were able to do that, right? They were, people say, uh, you know, where's your inner CEO if you were a rapper? But if you were a rapper, you had to be CEO of something in order for you to be in a platform, to be doing what you were doing in that place on any, any level of, of, of significance. Um, I just want to say that I'm seeing the world sort of come, come together more. These energies have always been around. You know, this, this thing, we term it hustle, but it's really just the ingenuity necessary to survive, you know, and navigate in the world. We call it hustle because um, I imagine that's just, you know, our way of giving it a name because sometimes we want to divorce ourselves from, from the academic space because that academic space was a source of brutality and hostility for a long time. But the reality of it, is still, of it is, is it's still wisdom, it's still knowledge, it's still invention, it's still development, you know, and it's still progress. So I think as we kind of pull back these labels, we can acknowledge brilliance in the streets, 
we can knowledge soul in the academic space and we can allow these things to come together. Um, the world is filled with way too many bright people for us to still have the problems that we have in the world. It's, it's gonna be our shame, you know what I mean? That we don't sit together and create people who invest with thought and consideration and care to solve the world's problems. If we can do all these things, all these things that we do digitally, technologically, economically, we can feed people, we can, we can educate people through poverty. We can solve the problems of poverty. Poverty isn't even something that should exist in this world at this point because we have wealth, we have intellect, we have the ability to develop and design and create whatever we want to. The question is, is do we want to? That's what we have to ask ourselves. Um, you know, I've been away from a lot of things, you know, for, for a while now and, um, and incubating, you know, ideas and doing what I needed to do to, to, to how do I say, uh, to deal with the resistance that comes with making change in the world. You know, we ask ourselves, you know, how come these things haven't been around or why was this thing not invented? There was a reason. There, there were forces that were set up to prevent, you know, certain patterns of evolution, certain patterns of development, right? All this, 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 this street hustle, right, it, it, it would have dominated it if it really had, you know, access early on, which is why it was suppressed, you know what I mean, which, which is why it was met with resistance. But we have the ability now to see the resistance, acknowledge it for what it is, and go beyond it and go past it, you know? And I think it just takes courageous folks, you know, who are not afraid to see the new world that's on the horizon, you know, separated by education and economics. You know, we actually can make spaces for everyone, but it requires that the creatives, the academics, you know, the intellectuals, those who think with their heart and emotional intelligent ones, you know, all come together, you know, in the same platform with the same kind of driving and unifying, unifying forces to see this world improve. We have the answers. We have so many of the answers. We have the technology. We have the wealth. We just have to be willing to share it. And in order for us to do that, we have to do the work in and on ourselves so that we can be conduits of change and improvement for other people. Because that's really what it's about. We have the ability. We have to be in a position where we're willing to do that for others because we're so confident in our own abilities and our own grace and our own blessings that we can actually pass knowledge and information on to others. But we can make a way. You know, I, I think part of the reason why there's so much invention in the technological space right now is because you have a lot of young cats who weren't given the tools, but they certainly have the ability. And what the space does is it neutralizes so much so that you know, if you don't have on the right clothing or you don't choose the, all the right words all the time, you still have a way. So in that respect, we should be very proud. You know what I mean? Very, very happy, very pleased with what's happening. Um, we just want to make sure that we retain freedom, though. You know, and that we, uh, we always retain our right to our integrity. You know, that no amount of money or no uh, kind of relationships compromise our ability to make decisions that aren't just money-based, you know Can what you I mean? Can you say that but one are, more time? Yeah. Say that one more time. <laughs> to make sure that we're, we're in a position always to make decisions that aren't just money-based, but that are moral, that are ethical, that are right, that are right, that we evolve, you know, uh, we evolve morally, emotionally, spiritually, uh, uh, ethically as we evolve technologically, financially, we just have to make sure that we, we're aligned, you know? I wasn't even prepared to talk. I'm no, just you, like hey, 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 but, hey, hey, but, a, vo um, a voice that's been missing for too long. <laughs> Come on back, sister. Come on back. We need you. We need you. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Jalen Brown, thank you, sir.